Hi, you guys. Welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know, I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review books, review courses, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. And you know, I always get into my disclaimer and reminder before we get started, just to remind you that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient by patient basis and any of the questions that you see here that I provide are designed and created by myself based off of the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. So I'm not just making these up um, randomly with no background or basis. I study and review um, what is on the exam, which guidelines they're currently um, testing you guys on, and then I design the questions so that you can adequately prepare and study effectively. Now, any of my videos where I am speaking generally and talking on topics that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. All right. So with that being said, let's get into our stuff for today. Now, before we get started with our questions, I wanted to throw this in here. Y'all have been asking, people have reached out. And so I am bringing it back. I'm not doing the full week, but I am doing a practice question course. It will be on Saturday, July the 13th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's $49 only. You will get me live. I will walk through the exam breakdown for the ANCC as well as AAMP exam for family, adult GERO, all of those exams we will talk through so that you know what to look out for. I've done a video on it, but I still receive questions. So I'm going to talk through. We will have a Q&A time. So if you have questions for me, I will go over those. We will do live practice questions. I will work through um, a few questions from each system so that you can gauge and understand and get a perspective on practice questions. I will talk through how to answer question types. Um, you know, on each exam, there's a variety of question type. We'll talk about that and how to break those down. And I'll provide you with some test taking tips. There will be some other um, things included as well, but this is the basis of the, the course. I won't hold you long, but it will be valuable. Um, so again, you've been asking, so this will be your time to work with me as we walk through and get your uh, get more foundation and structure and assistance on preparing with practice questions. We'll talk about resources um, that can be utilized uh, to study as well as um, Q&A so that y'all can get feedback from me live, okay? But with that being said, let's get into question number one for today, you guys. Question number one states, a patient notifies the nurse practitioner that she missed two days of her birth control pills. She is inquiring on what to do next. What is the best recommendation by the nurse practitioner? Is it A, use other forms of contraception as she has missed too many doses? B, take the two missed doses now and follow a normal regimen tomorrow? C, take one tablet now, the next dose that evening, take the second missed dose the following morning, and then that day's dose that evening, and be sure to use other forms of contraception as well? Or D, take two tablets now and two tablets this evening? Take a moment and tell me what you have in the comments, you guys. All right, so you know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first so it allows you to slow down and answer what is truly being asked of you, okay? So here the stem of the question states, what is the best recommendation by the nurse practitioner? So what are we recommending? Patient has notified the nurse practitioner that she's missed two days of her birth control and she wants to know what to do next. All right, so... You guys, I always tell you, with birth control, we're going to, if you, you can miss one and two days and catch up. If you miss three days, we'll need to provide, they'll need to utilize other contraception and then we will provide for a new dose pack, pill pack, whichever um, type of birth control pills they're taking, okay? 
so that they can start a new pack when it's time, you know. But for the either day one or day two, and in this situation, they have missed two days, you want to have them to take the first missed dose immediately, take the second dose that evening, then the following day, take the second missed dose that morning, and then you will take that day's dose that evening and they'll be caught up, okay? So C is your best answer. So think about it. If they've missed two days of birth control, that's a total of four pills we need to get taken and caught up, right? So we'll take two a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, okay? You're not going to tell them to take two tablets now and two in the evening. That's a no. Um, you don't want to just say they missed too many. If, if it was three missed doses, then you would have gone with that. But you can miss one or you can miss two doses. And C is your best answer here, okay? All right, question number two. The patient's CD4 count is 190, and the MP student is inquiring if Bactrim should be provided for PCP at this time. What is the best response for PCP management in HIV patients by the nurse practitioner? Is it A, no, the CD4 count needs to be above 200 before providing Bactrim? B, yes, provide Bactrim as the patient's CD4 count is less than 200 and they are immunocompromised? C, no, Bactrim should not be provided to patients with HIV? Or D, once the CD4 count reaches 500, the Bactrim can then be provided? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, so some of the question states, what is the best response for PCP management in HIV patients? So here, this patient's CD4 count is 190. MP student is inquiring if we should go ahead and provide Bactrim for PCP at this time. So would you say no, the CD4 count needs to be above 200 before providing? No. Is it B, yes, provide Bactrim as the patient's CD4 count is less than 200 and they are immunocompromised? Yes. This is your best answer. So let's think about it. You know we like to utilize Bactrim, Dapsone, et cetera, for the management of, um, like the prophylactic management of PCP for those who have HIV. Pneumocystic pneumonia, pneumonia is a severe lung disorder commonly found in immun immunocompromised patients, which can be fatal. So, um, with that CD4 count being less than 200, we know they're immunocompromised. You want to provide them with that prophylactic management to provide any worsening and deficits for this patient, okay? So you don't wanna wait for it to be above 200. The less than 200 is allowing you to know that it, they, they most definitely need it at this point, okay? So B is your best answer. And then lastly, question number three, the nurse practitioner is reviewing the patient's DEXA results. The T-score is negative 2.0. What is the best diagnosis based on these results? Is it A, osteoarthritis, B, osteoporosis, C, osteopenia, or D, no diagnosis can be made based on these results? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, you guys, so stimulant question states, what is the best diagnosis based on these results? So you know that when I talk about um, diagnosis of the question, the STEM states this, I tell you, you need to run it back and see what the assessment findings are to be able to determine a diagnosis. So this patient is coming in, had a DEXA scan, the nurse practitioner is reviewing those results, and the T-score is a negative 2.0. So your best answer choice would be C, osteopenia, because think about where our ranges fall, right? If it's less than or equal to negative 2.5, that's osteoporosis. But if it's negative 1 to negative 2.4, that's osteopenia, right? Because we know that osteopenia, osteoporosis talks about the loss and um, the loss of bone density to make it simple, right? Osteopenia is that initial stage. If we don't do anything to treat or manage this, it can worsen and lead to osteoporosis. So the more 
the higher the number, and I just say it this way to make it a little bit better. So like if it was negative 3.5, you know that's a less value. So that means it's worse, right? So that would be osteopenia. Because again, I mean, I'm sorry, osteoporosis. If it's less than or equal to negative 2.5, again, that's osteoporosis. If it's negative 1 to negative 2.4, that's osteopenia. <laughs> Getting all tongue-tied, but yes. So make sure and i like when i teach it i like to show it to you in a scale like just a line and maybe um i'll add that to my osteoporosis versus osteopenia video that i have so that you can see it because i think when i do one-on-one -on -one sessions I, I find people get mixed up because you're thinking of the negative number and getting mixed up but just remember that little range and um look at it in a scale so that you're able uh to kind of just go down because i i find that y'all know Osteopenia is the earlier stages. Osteoporosis is the more severe stage, but y'all mix up where that that meets on the line. So negative, less than or equal to negative 2.5, osteoporosis, negative one to negative 2.4, osteopenia. All right, you guys, I have said that enough. I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and I hope that you found this helpful and be sure to share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. If you need any of the resources that I offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio by giving us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. Um, I provide a variety of things, review book options, ebook, as well as paperback options. They are both linked in the bio of this channel. They are broken down by systems. There are interactive sections um, per system that is broken down. And you know how I teach assessment, diagnosis, evaluation, and treatment. It is broken down in that fashion. It, there um, are images. It is in color. So to help with your studying, because you know I'm always telling you guys to look at images to help tie it together. So I have included those to help you as well, as well as there are um, some medications associated by systems listed as well as practice questions with rationales at the end. My self-paced review course for family and adult GERO um, review students preparing for both exams, ANCC or AAMP, are um, also linked in the bio. It's broken down by system as well. Videos that you can watch as many times as you like with many quizzes to test your knowledge as you are working through the content that, like I said, is linked in the bio as well. Um, our five-week review, be on the lookout of the next one. We are in the middle of one currently. And then uh, my non-clinical uh, courses, as well as one-on-one -on -one sessions. I break my one-on-one -on -one sessions down into three different tiers. So I always say reach out to me um, as they're so customized. We need to gauge what you truly need. Let's do a consultation call or you can shoot a message or email so that we can gauge what you really need because it's broken down that you can either um, book a session for review of a weakness. A lot of people like say asthma is your issue. We'll spend that time getting that down and working with you and giving you um, steps and tricks to get that together. Some people are trying to assess their exam readiness. That's an option. Or lastly, one-on-one -on -one sessions in the custom package where you may have potentially been unsuccessful previously and you're looking on how to get back on track and study and review, that's also an option um, as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I am doing a practice question course on July the 13th from uh, 10 a.m. to 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. It is $49. Um, I am capping that class at 20 students just so that I'm able to... Uh, manage and answer all of your questions accordingly. And the link is in the description and I'll put it in the comments as well. So if you want to join, I'll be happy to have you. But as always, you guys, make sure you meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye y'all.